and welcome grade 11 accounting students. In today's lesson, we're going to be doing a bit of revision on work that we have covered earlier on. So what exactly are we going to be revising? We're focusing on partnerships. That's right, guys. We're going to focus once again on partnerships, but this time we are going to focus on ledger accounts the accounting equation, and remember, with the accounting equation comes the effect also on that accounting equation. In other words, A is equal to O plus L. Right, as usual, I'm going to remind you guys to have your stationery in front of you, to make sure you've got your calculator with you as well, and let's get started. Okay. All right, so we're going to start immediately with a question on the accounting equation. And I want you guys, as I'm drawing the ledger accounts, as I'm analyzing each transaction, remember, I'm expecting you to work with me. Got it? OK, let's get started. The question wants us to. It's the analysis of transactions on the accounting equation, and then we're also going to be focusing on ledger accounts. Right, the information that we have in front of us, the following information was extracted from the accounting records of Hari Dev traders with partners Hari and Dev. The business uses a constant markup of 100% on cost. Okay, right, let's read on. Assume that the bank balance is favorable unless stated differently. So remember, guys, this is absolutely important. This is critical information. So what does this mean? This is something that you guys are familiar with, but let's just quickly recap. Bank balance is favorable, meaning that bank is an asset unless they state differently. In other words, bank becomes a liability or bank is unfavorable, bank is now overdrawn. Okay, so for now we're gonna assume bank is favorable, bank is an asset, unless we come across information that tells us that's not the case anymore. Okay, got it. Right, so we're going to be analyzing the transactions below in the table provided. So before we look at the actual transactions, let's go to the table so we can understand the various columns in the table. Okay, so there we have our columns. So number, obviously that refers to the actual transaction. Then general ledger, which account gets debited general ledger, which account gets credited, and then, very, very important, the impact this has on the accounting equation. A is equal to O plus L, assets, owner's equity, and liability. Now, they have given us an example, obviously, to show us in terms of the amount, show the amount, the plus, the minus signs, etc. I'm not going to go through the example with you guys. I'm going to go straight to the first transaction. So let's do that. Right, there's our very first transaction, transaction one. Partner Hari withdrew his monthly salary by issuing a business check for 10,000 Rand. Okay, now remember guys, there's obviously going to be two accounts affected with every transaction. So if we read this one more time, you have a partner who is withdrawing his monthly salary by issuing a business check for 10,000 Rand. Now remember guys, when a partner takes his monthly salary, we consider this to be drawings. The only time we allocate a salary to the partner is at the end of the financial year. So whatever he takes during the year goes into his drawings account. Okay, got that. So the two accounts affected will be the following. The first account is drawings. And remember, when it comes to a partnership, you've got to specify the name of the partner. And the second account, he's issuing a business check. So the second account is bank. Okay, you guys got that. 
Right, let's now look at what's going to happen to drawings, what's going to happen to bank, which account will get debited, which account will get credited. I'm going to start off with bank first. Bank is an asset. Right, and we all know assets increase on the debit side, they decrease on the credit side. So let's examine what's happening to the business's bank account. Now, if a check was issued for 10,000, immediately your bank balance is going to decrease. The bank balance is going to go down because a payment of 10,000 is being made. So immediately bank will be credited. Account credited is bank with the amount of 10,000, which means drawings will be debited. So that account will be debited with your 10,000. Okay, not difficult, guys. No calculation required. It's just a matter of could you identify the two accounts correctly. Right, so we've done that. So let's now transfer this information onto our answer sheet. One more time, I'm debiting drawings and I'm crediting my bank account. So let's do that. Right, so account debit for number one. We are debiting drawings. Right, and remember guys, drawings, which partner? So make sure you write the name of the partner. I don't have space, so I'm just gonna use his initial. And then account credit is your bank account. Right, the impact this has had on the accounting equation. Now we know bank is an asset, I've just explained that. So your bank balance means assets are decreasing, so a minus for decreasing by 10,000. And then owner's equity, drawings remember represents owner's equity, and the moment the owner takes away from the business, owner's equity decreases by 10,000. Right, now immediately, liabilities, obviously there was no impact on liabilities. So the first transaction completed. Now remember guys, this is something you may have done in grade 10. There's always a way of checking your accounting equation, whether mathematically it makes sense. So always try to do that for every transaction. Check whether this equation makes sense. Okay, what am I talking about? If I had to put an equal to sign, remember A is equal to O plus L, and if I now inspect the left-hand side of the equation, okay, the assets. So on the left-hand side, I'm getting minus 10,000. Remember, equal to means it must equal to what I'm getting on the right-hand side, and on the right-hand side, O plus L. So if I put a plus sign here, Negative 10,000 plus zero gives me negative 10,000. So in other words, mathematically, this equation is correct. Okay, you guys got that. Right, not difficult stuff, guys. Not, not difficult at all. Let's now move on to the next transaction. Okay, our second transaction, I'm going to read out the transaction. And then I'm going to give you guys a minute to identify the two accounts affected. Okay, so work with me, please. The second transaction involves partner Dev increased his capital contribution by contributing a vehicle towards the business operations. And the worth of the vehicle is 120000 Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a minute and I want you to identify the two accounts affected by this transaction as well as which account will get debited, which account in the general ledger will get credited. So your minute, your time starts now.
Okay, guys, time's up. Let's see how many of you were able to identify the accounts correctly. So I'm going to read the transaction just one more time. Patan Dev increased his capital contribution by contributing a vehicle towards the business operations, 120,000. Okay, so let's draw two ledger accounts. And let's try to identify firstly the two accounts and then which account is debited, which account is credited. Right, so the first account, you have a partner that is increasing his capital contribution. So immediately the first account that comes into mind is capital and the name of the partner who's increasing the capital contribution. So capital, partner Dev. Then the next account, what is he contributing to the business? He's contributing a vehicle. Okay, so the second account, the business is now gaining an asset or a new vehicle is coming into the business. So that's our second account. All right, let's quickly identify both accounts. So capital, we all know is owner's equity. Vehicle is an asset. So I'm just going to put my plus and minus signs. Owner's equity decreases on the debit side, increases on the credit side. Right, so let's now look at which account will be debited, which account will be credited. I'm going to start with vehicles first. The business is obviously now gaining or there's another vehicle coming into the business. So immediately, the value or the amount of assets that the business now owns is going to increase. It's going to go up. So vehicles will be debited with that amount of 120000 Okay. Right. Capital, on the other hand. Now, remember, the more capital the partners contribute, the more profit the owners expect. Because capital, the more you put into the business, you obviously expect your owner's equity to increase. Profit with more capital will increase. So capital will be credited with that amount of 120000 Okay, you guys got that. So debit vehicles, credit capital. Hopefully most of you were able to identify the two accounts correctly. So let's enter that into our answer sheet. Okay, so account debit for the second transaction. I debited vehicles. Okay, and I credited capital. Okay, and again, guys, a reminder, the name of the partner, please. Vehicles now means I have more assets. So my assets are increasing by 120,000. And then capital increases owner's equity. So plus under owner's equity, 120,000. Okay, you guys got that. Right, time to move on to the third transaction. Okay, our third transaction is nothing new because you've actually come across this in grade 10. Some of you may be even in grade 9, depending on when you started accounting. So transaction 3 reads as follows. You sold merchandise on credit to C. Carl for an amount of 4,800 Rand. So you sold merchandise on credit. Now you guys are familiar with this. Whenever there is a sale, I need to record the selling price and I need to record the cost price. So in total, there's going to be four different accounts affected by this particular entry. Two accounts for the selling price. Okay, let's just do that. And then for the cost price, there will always be also be two accounts affected. Right, let's start off with the selling price. The selling price sold merchandise and they're giving me an amount, 4,800. So that is my selling price, 4,800. Right, let's look at or let's identify the two accounts affected. The first account has been a sale. So the first account obviously will be sales. And the second account, the business sold on credit. So there's now a debtor involved. So your second account will be debtor's control. Okay, debtor's control, we all know is an asset, plus, minus. Sales, owner's equity, minus, plus. Right, let's start with debtor's control. You can start with sales as well, doesn't really matter. I just want to start with debtor's control. 
The business sold on credit, which means the debtors now owe the business money, or the debtor, in this, in this case, CCAL, is now owing the business money. So the balance for debtor's control is going to increase because, obviously, uh, someone now owes the business money. So debtor's control will be debited with that amount of 4800 You guys got that. Right. Sales, on the other hand, sales is an income. And remember, if there is an income, it means that profit that goes to the owner is now increasing, so this will be my credit. Okay, you guys have that. So I'm going to debit debtors control and I'm going to credit sales. So let's do that. Okay, so number three, and I'm going to call this 3A. So we're debiting debtors control. Okay, guys, remember, I'm abbreviating because of space, but you guys must write this in full, and we are crediting sales. Okay, right, debtors control means assets are now increasing by 4,800, and then sales means owner's equity is increasing by 4,800. Okay, right, guys, before we do the second part, I think let, let's take a quick break. I want you guys to go through the three transactions or the two and a half transactions that I've done. And then when you guys come back or when we come back, we will continue with the cost of sale part of this entry. Okay, see you guys now now. Welcome back, grade 11s. Right, before the break, we completed the first part to transaction number three, where we recorded the actual sale. Now let's look at the cost of sale, okay? What did it cost the business in order for them to obviously have the sale? What was the cost price? Now remember, guys, at the beginning of the exercise, so if we go back to the instructions, we are given information that the business uses a constant markup of 100% on cost. So we now need to use this information to calculate our cost price. In other words, our cost of sale. So let's do that. All right, so we're given the selling price was 4,800. So let's get the calculator out. 4,800, we're now gonna multiply this by 100 and we're going to divide this by 100 plus markup. You know what I'm talking about. You've done this a million times in class. Okay, so the cost of sale or the cost price is 2,400. That's how much the business bought these goods for in terms of the, the, sell, uh, the sale itself. Right, so that is our cost price. So the two accounts affected when recording your cost of sale would be the following. The first account, obviously, cost of sales. And the second account will be trading stock, because that's what you obviously selling. Okay, so again, I'm going to start with trading stock, and then I'm going to look at cost of sales. Trading stock, we all know, is an asset. Okay, plus, minus. And the moment you sell stock, remember the customer, when, he, when they buy the stock, they're not going to leave the stock in your shop. They're going to obviously take the stock with them. So immediately, the amount of trading stock you have is now going to go down. It's going to decrease. The customer is buying the stock. The stock is now leaving the business premises. So the amount of stock you have is now going to decrease. So trading stock will now decrease with a value of 2,400. In other words, trading stock is being credited. Okay, what now will happen to cost of sales? Now, obviously, if trading stock is credited, cost of sales has to be debited. But let's look at why. Cost of sales, we know, is an expense, so it's owner's equity. And remember, owner's equity decreases on the debit side. So on the debit side, there's my debit because it's an expense, which means the owner, every time there's an expense, profit now obviously decreases. So cost of sales will be debited. Okay, you guys got that. Right, you've been doing this. This transaction is not new. You've been doing this in grade 10, some of you in grade 9. So let's enter this into our 
um, into our answer sheet. So we're debiting cost of sales and we're crediting trading stock. Okay, so for the second part of this transaction, debit cost of sales. Okay, and again, guys, I'm reminding you, please do not abbreviate. I know if I see this abbreviation when I'm marking, I mark it incorrect. So many teachers are like that. We want to see cost of sales, and then account credit will be trading stock. Okay, trading stock means assets are now decreasing by 2,400. And cost of sales means profit is now decreasing by 2,400. Okay, right, third transaction completed. Let's now move on to our next transaction. Okay, the fourth transaction. Okay, right, we are told partner Hari decreased his capital contribution by 30,000, issued a check. Okay, so who issued a check? Obviously, it's the business. Partner Hari decreased his capital by 30,000, issued a check, and very, very important, assume bank is unfavorable. Okay, you guys got that. Bank balance is unfavorable. Right, I'm going to give you guys this time two minutes to identify the two accounts for me, and I want you guys to show me which account will be debited and which account will be credited. Okay. All right. So, guys, two minutes for you to start working on transaction four. Your time starts now. Okay, guys, time's up. Right, once again, let's see how many of you were able to get this correct. Okay, let's read the transaction one more time. Partner Harry decreased his capital contribution by 30,000, issued a check, assume bank is unfavorable. So the two accounts affected, okay, so the first account obviously will be your bank account. And the second account, a partner is, is decreasing his capital, so the second account will be capital. Right, and again, capital with the name of the partner. Okay, so let's firstly identify the two accounts. So capital, we know, is owner's equity. I'm just going to put plus and minus signs as well. And then bank, on the other hand, in this case, because bank is unfavorable, it simply means bank is now a liability, not an asset anymore. So bank is a liability. So if I put my minus and plus, you all know 
their uh, liabilities decrease on the debit side and increase on the credit side. General knowledge, or not general knowledge, it's stuff that accounting students at the stage should be very comfortable with. Okay, so let's now look at the impact this transaction will have on the following two general ledger accounts. So let's start off with capital first. The partner is decreasing his capital contribution. So immediately, capital is now decreasing by 30,000. So the account debit is obviously capital. Right, bank on the other hand is a liability. Now remember guys, when bank is unfavorable, it means that the business is borrowing money from the bank. It's not the business's money. So the moment the business issues a check, remember, you are actually asking the bank to pay that check for you. You don't have money in your bank account, which means the liability you are owing your bank is now increasing. Your bank overdraft is now increasing by 30,000, so bank will be credited. Okay, All right, slightly different because bank is now a liability. So let's enter this into our, uh, our table. So one more time, I am debiting capital and I am crediting my bank account. So let's do that. Okay, so the fourth transaction Account debit is capital, right? And the name of the partner. Account credit is your bank account. Right, impact on the accounting equation. Capital we know is owner's equity. Owner's equity is decreasing by 30,000. And bank, on the other hand, is a liability. You're now owing the bank more money because your liability is now increasing by 30,000. Now remember guys, earlier on I spoke about that accounting equation, okay? Check whether mathematically this is correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an equal to sign to show you that I have not made or I did not make an error. All right, so there's asset, so let's put our equal to sign. Right, so on the uh, left-hand side of this equation, which is assets, assets obviously did not get affected, so assets is sitting on zero. Let's now look at owner's equity, O plus L. So owner's equity minus 30,000 plus 30,000 negative plus a positive is obviously giving us zero. So in other words, assets A is equal to O plus L. So mathematically, this equation is making sense. Okay, you guys got that. Right, let's carry on. I think we've got one more transaction to look at, and then we can look at our next question. Okay, there's two more. Right, number five, guys. Partner Hari donated trading stock, 4,000 Rand, to the local primary school on behalf of the business. The accountant made the following entry. So let's firstly understand the transaction, then let's look at the entry made by the accountant. So partner Hari donated trading stock to the local primary school on behalf of the business. He did not take it for personal use. So he took some stock out of the business and he donated the stock. So immediately, as accounting students, we know that the two accounts affected should obviously be trading stock and donations. Okay, so we know that that's definitely the two accounts affected. However, the accountant, and remember guys, the accountant is only human, made the following entry. So what did the accountant do? The accountant debited drawings and credited trading stock. So in other words, immediately we can see the accountant made an error. Okay, where was the error made? Instead of debiting donations, remember donations should be debited, okay, not drawings because the partner never took the stock for personal use, so donations should be debited. 
Credit trading stock, that's absolutely correct, so that's fine. Trading stock should be credited because, remember, the business is giving away stock, so your stock value is decreasing. So that part is absolutely correct, but this is where the error is, or that, that's where the error lies. So this is a correction of error. How are we going to fix the error? Okay, now, something that I always drill, emphasize on in class, and I'm sure your teachers probably do the same. Before you can fix the error, you need to firstly understand what is the error, what is the problem. There's no point in trying to fix a problem if you have no idea what the problem is. Okay, you guys with me. What is the problem? Then I fix the problem. So here we know immediately that the problem is as follows. We debited drawings. Okay, partner Hari, so we debited drawings with an amount of 4,000. But we should have debited donations. So how do I fix this? Remember guys, I can't to fix this. I'm gonna to have to fix it with a debit and a credit. So in order for me to fix this error, drawings must now be credited. So if I credit drawings, I'm now removing this 4,000, and then I debit donations with this amount of 4,000. Okay, so I'm going to say this one more time. Drawings will be credited in order to obviously fix the error, and now I correctly debit donations with that amount of 4,000. So let's do that. Okay, so in our answer sheets, Transaction number five, so we've identified we are going to debit donations because that is the correct account that should be debited, and we're now going to credit drawings due to the error that was made by the accountant. So again, drawings and the name of the partner. Okay, both these accounts are owner's equity, so there's no impact on assets, there's no impact on liabilities. So let's start always with a debit. Donations is an expense, which means profit is going to decrease by 4,000. And remember, drawings is being credited, which means drawings increases owner's equity by 4,000. Okay, right, not difficult, guys. Um, requires a bit of thinking, but I promise you, spend a bit of time, think about the error, and then fix the error. Okay, let's move on to the last transaction, or we may want to quickly take a break and then look at the last transaction. Okay, so I think, guys, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll complete transaction number six. Okay, see you guys now now. Okay, guys, welcome back. Right, we're down to the last transaction for the accounting equation, so let's get started. Partner Dev took stock for personal use. Selling price, aha, selling price is 4,300. Right, again, guys, we know that when the partners take anything from the business, when the owners, let's leave partners out of this, even in a sole trader, if the owner takes anything from the business, we always record this at cost price, not at selling price. So the first thing that we need to do is calculate what is the cost price of the stock that the partner is taking. So remember, guys, the calculation, we've done one like this before. I'm going to take my selling price. So in order to get my cost price, I take my selling price, 3,400. I multiply this by 100, divided by 100 plus markup. Remember, guys, the markup in this particular exercise was 100%. So I'm obviously dividing this by 200. And that should give me... Okay, let's just get the calculator out. It should be 1,700, but we haven't really used the calculator today, so let's just get the calculator out. 3,400 times 100 divided by 200, which is obviously half of 3,400, to give us 1,700. Okay, right, so let's look at the two accounts that will get affected with the 1,700. So the first account, you have a partner taking something for personal use. So immediately, one account is drawings. 
Okay, partner Dev. And then the second account, he's taking stock. So the second account will be trading stock. Right, drawings, owner's equity minus plus. Once again, partner is taking something out of the business. So owner's equity is now going to decrease by 1,700, not 3,400, guys. Just be careful there. And then trading stock is an asset. And we all know trading stock, the partner is taking the stock out of the business. So trading stock is now going to decrease by 1,700. Okay, so there's my account debit and my account credit. And there's the impact on assets and the impact on owner's equity. So let's put this into our table. Okay. Right, so number six, guys. Just bring this down a bit. The account debit is drawings. Okay, the name of the partner. And account credit is a trading stock. Okay, drawings, owner's equity is decreasing by 1,700. And then finally, trading stock means less stock in the business. So trading stock is decreasing assets by 1,700. Okay, right, we've come to the end of the first question where we've analyzed six different transactions. But remember, guys, what I often find... Um, is that the student will be f uh, very familiar and very comfortable with the general ledger. But the moment we test the general ledger in the form of analysis of transaction, impact on A is equal to O plus L, students do not link the two. They do not link the general ledger with the accounting equation. And remember, guys, it's the same thing, but we're simply testing it in a different way. Okay, so just remember that the next time you see an accounting equation, it's simply your general ledger being tested in a different format. Okay, right, so let's now move on to our next question. Let's see how far we get with the next question. It's quite a long question, and we may only be able to do certain accounts. Um, so let's see how far we get. Okay, our second question, guys. So I'm starting off with the information given. So I'm given a list of... Uh, balances, okay, at the end of the financial year. So let's go to the actual exercise itself. Okay, so I'm given the following. The following adjustments have not yet been recorded. Okay, so guys, it, this is a new question, and we're now going to complete certain ledger accounts. The following adjustments have not been recorded. Okay, and I've got a list of transactions that I need to complete. Okay, right, let's go to the actual question itself so we know exactly which ledger accounts the question wants us to complete. Okay, so in our information, okay, it should be the answer booklet, not information. Okay, so for this question, guys, we are completing the following ledger accounts. So we've got capital, okay, next account, we've got drawings, right, then we've got current account for each partner, okay, and that should be it. So four ledger accounts, I'm not going to be able to do all the ledger accounts, and what I think I'm going to do, though, is start with the accounts that are uh, quite important or tested in this exercise differently from, from the way in which your textbook may present the, the question itself. So I think for now, let's tackle drawings and let's try to do one of the current accounts. Okay, so you guys with me. Right, so I'm looking at the drawings account for partner Brink. So I'm going to quickly first identify the account, owner's equity minus plus. So we all know drawings will start off with an opening balance. So let's go to our information and let's look for that opening balance. Okay, so from the information that is given to us, drawings, partner Brink has 
a balance of 86,500 Rand. So let's fill that in, in our answer book. Okay, so drawings 86,500 is my opening balance. So my balance brought down. And this balance, I know I haven't given you guys dates. This represents the end of the financial year. So I'm just going to put in the 28th of Feb, which is the information that is missing. The financial year ends on the 28th of Feb. Right, brought down my opening balances. Let's now look at the additional information that's going to change your balance. So let's go back to the information sheet and let's go through our additional information. Right, so from the information that is given, the following adjustments have not yet been recorded. And remember, guys, I'm obviously now focusing on just drawings. So I'm now looking at, on the 31st of December, Partner Brink withdrew the following for personal use. So he took some stationery and he withdrew cash, 2,000 rand. Okay, so remember, these transactions were not recorded. Right, so let's record the stationery first, and then we'll look at the cash. Okay, so if we go to our answer sheet, stationery that was taken, 3,000 Rand. Okay, so stationery, 300, not 3,000. Remember, this would have been recorded in the general journal because it's year end and these transactions were not recorded. My contra account, contra simply means other account affected, is stationary. Okay, right, back to the information. He also took cash. Let's just quickly confirm the amount. Okay, so he took cash as well for an amount of 2,000 Rand. Once again, it's not recorded, so let's record this on our answer sheet. So debit 2,000. Okay, once again, journal. Now you're probably thinking, but it's cash, so it should be the CPJ. You are correct, or you can uh, put this into the general journal, doesn't really matter. And the contra account, this time, because he's taking cash from the business, the contra account will be bank. Okay, so at the end of the financial year, what do we now do to drawings? Drawings will now get closed off to current account. Okay, so this is where partnerships are obviously different from your sole trader. So current account, Again, you've got to specify which partner's current account. So it's partner Brink. Okay, so let's just get the calculator out so that we can close off this account. Okay, 86,500 plus 300 plus 2,000. Right, so we're closing off an amount of 88,800 to current account. Okay, so current account, 88,800. Okay, right, and remember guys, this is happening at the end of the financial year. Right, this account must be properly closed off, so remember a debit um, obviously, with a total and the credit with the same total is an indication that the account has either been closed off or the account has been balanced. But in this case, this account has been closed off. Okay, so the first account completed. Right, let's now look at one of the current accounts um, of the partners. So we're going to start with the current account of MAN. And um, hopefully, or let, let's just see how we go in terms of time. Right, so immediately the first thing I do is I identify the account, owner's equity minus plus, and I bring down my opening balance for my current account. So let's do that. Our opening balance given to us in our information is as follows. Okay, so the opening balance, current account, MUN, has an opening balance. He has a debit balance of 1,084. Okay, so let's bring that down. 
on the debit side, okay, 1,084. And remember, that will represent your balance at the beginning of the financial year because we still have to take into account this year's adjustments. So that is my opening balance, 1st of March, beginning of my financial year. Right, guys, I think I am definitely going to run out of time, so I'm going to quickly try to explain this account, and you guys can fill in the figures. Right, what do we now do in terms of the current account? Now, remember, I've done this in previous lessons. On the credit side, I am going to show whatever the partners are entitled to receive as per their partnership agreement. So we know that every partner is entitled to a yearly salary, okay, salary for 12 months. They are entitled to interest on capital that they've contributed. They may also be entitled to a bonus, again, depending on the partnership agreement. And thereafter, we look at if there is a remaining loss coming from appropriation, or is there a remaining profit, obviously, also coming from appropriation. Now, remember, guys, if there is a remaining profit, that goes on the credit side. So if there's a profit, okay, and it's obviously coming from appropriation in brackets, okay, I'm just going to write down profit. Remember, you guys obviously don't write this down. You simply write down appropriation. But if, however, there is a remaining loss, this will be shown on the debit side. Okay, so the credit side, we show what the partners are entitled to in terms of their partnership agreement, okay, their entitlement. Right, what do we now show on the debit side? The debit side of your current account shows you what the partners have already taken or with, withdrawn from the business. What have they taken in total from the business will be recorded on the debit side. So when we now compare the debit side to the credit side, we're then able to balance this account or identify, has this partner taken too much out of the business or is he still entitled to more from the business? Okay, obviously guys, if we end up with a credit balance, it means he's still entitled. Whereas if we end up with a debit balance, he's taken too much out of the business. Okay, right, why am I not filling in the amounts? Because we know that every amount is gonna now require a calculation, and unfortunately, we are running out of time. So just remember, guys, when you're drawing up this current account, Always remember the actual format, what goes on the debit side, what goes on the credit side, and then begin with your calculations. Okay, you guys got that. Right, you obviously will do the same for um, the account for Partner Brink and the other account that we've not completed is your capital account. So very, very quickly, when I do complete this account or when you guys complete this account, Remember, capital is obviously owner's equity. We will bring down an opening balance on the credit side of this account. If the partner increases his capital contribution, it's recorded on the credit side, but there may be instances where he decreases his contribution. So when that happens, we obviously show this on the debit side, and then we simply balance this account. Okay, you guys got that. Right, guys, I know we're close to the June exam. Hopefully, you are revising. You are going through work that you've done in class or work that you've done out of class. Please remember, the only way to master accounting is to practice from past papers. Until we meet again, from me, Mahesh Lal, it's lots of love. Stay warm, stay hydrated, and practice. Goodbye.